Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of KSP Road to Exploration, and today we start with an attempt at something I failed last episode, to hold this booster to orbit and test it. The booster on top is the little flea booster, I've drained most of its fuel, but it is quite a heavy payload, because I've got to have the booster, I've got to have a little stage to get back, I've got to have the capsule, obviously, and uh, I've also got to get up to about 170 kilometers above Kerbin. Um, this is the lower stages comprised of a large solid rocket booster and a couple of smaller solid rocket boosters giving an extra kick, which I did put parachutes on, but they kind of were going too fast to work, so I'll have to work on that. But still, I was going for a cheap um, method to do this with a lot of thrust rather than efficiency. Um, anyway, into four times time accelerate. Uh, I kind of flip out, which is maybe why I failed, but I kind of don't think I had enough delta V anyway, um, because, I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I, I just, I'm just not great at building, uh, rockets without any aid. You know when you have just kind of this weird payload that you've never really thought about taking into orbit and you have constraints like certain amounts of mass? Anyway, you can see there I didn't really get to orbit so I just fired up the booster just to push myself a little forward. Um, so I didn't even get close to orbit because it was another one of my nice fails. I also left the monopropellant in the uh, capsule which was foolish. Uh, I should have taken that out make it a little bit lighter. I almost actually do get to orbit just with no nothing I can really do. Uh, so yeah, that went kind of horribly. It was just experimental and it was cheap and I get paid a lot of money for taking that booster to orbit and testing it, so I can have a few attempts at this. And it's kind of good to like just be able to have a few attempts at something like this because it kind of teaches you how to make weird rockets for weird payloads. But yeah, I do have MechDreb installed, so uh, at some point I will have some aids to build uh, decent rockets. And you know, when I have more mass and better parts I can build some standard rockets and stuff. Anyway, we're coming down in the dark in these hills and Probably going to be killed by the Kerbal Wolves, I don't really know what kind of wolves they have on Kerbin, but probably mean ones, like most wolves. Anyway, I'm just doing a little bit of a test there, just firing off that booster, and not that booster, that separator. Got paid about three grand for that. Uh, just one of those little missions you can get. Um, just nice to do that, little extra cash, always good. So that's, that's that done, not a lot to say about it. Uh, but now, we're going to try it again with sort of the same setup. Um... But I've put some wings on the top so that hopefully it'll be stable when we separate the booster. But it's tipping over quite a lot. And I'm just going to uh, slow down because that was actually sped up that little bit. And, uh, yeah. Then, uh, the, then this happens. I try to get away because I don't want to be forced into the uh, ocean. And we do escape the booster and that's good. And then, for some reason, this kind of flips out and then I kind of fire the booster and then uh, fire up the main engine and then all of that stage destroys is my parachute so I'm left with just a rocket stage and a capsule. This was my worst attempt yet. It, in an attempt to stabilize the rocket on decouplement I uh, destabilized the rocket in general. Um, this whole mission just goes just gone to hell. Um, that usually happens when I do career mode. There's usually like a few missions that I just kind of get stuck on for some reason and it really screws with me. But anyway, I can land this because, you know, we've got the new water model so it's slightly more forgiving and I've got an engine so, you know, that's all good. Um, I'm going to totally ditch this whole solid rocket booster below design but I will do this mission. Don't you worry. Um, by the end of the episode I will complete this mission. Anyway, a nice perfect landing. A bit horrific but Val's a badass so it's fine. Right, onto space tourism. So, yeah, I've got a mission for, to do a little bit of space tourism. I've got a tourist, I've got a hull to orbit. Uh, so, my kind not to orbit, to a suborbital trajectory. So, my kind of first idea was um, just put a booster under it, and that'll probably go suborbital. But what I didn't take into account is this would probably work with one capsule, but I've got to take a goddamn pilot. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, when I have probes and stuff, this will be much easier because I won't have to put another pilot on top and the pod won't look so stupid. But yeah, so this actually is totally under-thrusted and also not super great. So <laughs> the first half of this video isn't uh, my pr finest hour, but you know, anyway, you can just kind of see how slowly this is rising. I don't usually like taking on space tourism so early, but most of these are just suborbital. Uh, they don't pay particularly well either, which is kind of shitty. Um, but if you use solid rocket boosters, you can make a decent profit. Uh, this one, however, I under-thrusted, and it probably didn't have enough delta V anyway, so... Another one of my, uh, classic failures. The classic tape. Uh, classic tape fails. Um, because that, that's most of what I do. But yeah, uh, it's... I, I think space tourism has already kind of been a thing a bit in real life with, uh, 
people paying exorbitant amounts of money to go to the ISS. I mean, America currently is paying the uh, paying the Russians exorbitant amounts of money to go to the uh, ISS, like a ridiculous amount. I hear it's like seventy million dollars a pilot, whereas you could get seven pilots to orbit on the Dragon for that. I think it's actually about a hundred million because they pay for insurance and the capsule, so it's more expensive than just a rocket. But for a little more than the cost of one pilot on a Soyuz. You can get seven pilots to orbit with the help of SpaceX. But yeah, I mean, that's not because Russian rockets are super expensive. It's because Russians are surprisingly incredibly capitalist now. <laughs> I wonder, I think I do have some Russian views. I just find it uh, rather interesting that the whole used to be a place of, you know, the big communism. Yeah, fuck yeah. And now it's kind of quite capitalist. But yeah, anyway, um, just a little bit of uh, space, space tourism talk. But anyway, uh, yeah, that totally failed because... Um, usually at the start of the, the start of career modes, I always seem to fail just constantly. I will get better. I haven't played much of this sort of stuff anyway. I haven't done that much. Actually, no, I've been doing Out of Planet, so I do still have space skills. Um, but yeah, we're also coming down pretty fast. Um, like, really, really, really fast. And the chutes still aren't able to open. And I'm getting kind of worried. And there they go, we're fine. And just touches down <laughs> safe. So, I mean, she the tourist didn't go to space today, but she probably had a bit of a thrill, almost dying. Don't let me be your space tourism guy. Anyway, uh, space tourism 2.0. This is all up four times. Time accelerate. Um, yeah, this is a two-stage solid rocket booster rocket. Actually, three-stage, because I need... Um, given how badly that slowed down the atmosphere, I put a slowing down engine on, because we're going to be coming quite steep, because I've got to go to all, uh, suborbital pretty efficiently, um, and I've got to slow down quite well. So I did put an engine on there just for safety. Also, I needed it to boost me a little bit into orbit. Did actually experience my uh, first crash of the series, which is weird. It felt pretty stable, but yeah, I do quick save occasionally, which is lucky because crash comes here. Um, yeah, you maybe not even notice that because I'm so good at editing, but I don't know. It's it hasn't put it super crashy, but still. Anyway, um, enough of talking about unstableness. Uh, yeah, the, this kind of flips out a bit, but that's fine because now it's really draggy and the engine really did help kind of push me a little bit. And the parachutes pop out at a fantastic time. Um, I do actually have uh, uh, a mission to take two uh, of these tourists to orbit, so we will be doing another one of these. But yeah, that went pretty well. Two-stage solar rocket booster. Pretty cheap way of going suborbital. Um, so I thought that was a pretty good... Pretty good. I definitely made a profit even with the terrible amount they pay uh, for for this kind of treatment, uh, this horror horrific treatment. And yeah, we got a little bit of money. Uh, no science or anything. We haven't done a ton of science, but we will be doing some in this episode because uh, science has been stagnating, and it's the start of our space program. We should be sciencing the shit out of everything. Um, I probably should have turned the science meter up. Anyway, same thing again. This time we've got uh, Jeb and Samlock, who is the other tourist. Uh, we had uh, what was it? What was her name? Like. Um, Fran something was, uh, I sent her up with Val so that, you know, they can talk about, you know, it's, it's a bit of girl power. Just talk about unicorns and Ryan Seacrest, I guess. I don't really, uh, 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 I don't know what women talk about. Um, but yeah, these guys can talk about, you know, um, physics and how they have jobs and stuff. Oh, oh my god. You know, and, you know, and, and nothing too sexist. Anyway, yeah, whatever. Um, let's just breeze over the thing I just kind of implied there, and uh, just, yeah, realize that I've burned a little bit too much fuel, but should be able to slow down. Obviously, the, the women were far more efficient with their fuel, because, you know, the... You, uh, anyway, let's uh, slow down now-ish, and hopefully slow down just enough to not totally die, and do this, because that's way more drag. I know you probably shouldn't point yourself sideways into the atmosphere, or, you know, head first, but I'm going head first now, and you can see I'm doing this oscillation thing to get as much drag as possible, so I slow down just in the nick of time, which is glorious, because um, that would have gone horribly, and we would have lost the glorious Jebediah Kerman and that other guy who wanted to go to space on some of the first rockets, like a huge putz. And yeah, we just get our money and us, not science, but you know, we, uh, we, did, we did pretty well. And I'm going to upgrade the launch pad, 150 grand, 150 Gs. Because I think to do the solid rocket booster mission, I need a bigger rocket. I need a normal rocket, like you see here, with two big boosters on the side. I just went full bore. Just big old, big old, big old rocket now. Just big old first stage. I also, incidentally, took on, um, you see those markers there? 
Yeah, I took on a mission to study, uh, to fly a plane through them. Then I realized they were on the other side of the Earth, so on the other side of Kerbin, so I cancelled that mission. So I lost a bit of money um, there. That's just, yeah, something I, well, wasn't really any interesting footage of that, just my putzness. Anyway, yeah, so we're just going to go upwards. A uh, bit of a tall rocket, because I've got a massive upper stage, because I was not going to fail again. If I do this, I still make a profit on this mission. If I don't, I... Not sure. It's not a particularly expensive rocket, because most of the thrust in Delta V comes from those giant solid rocket boosters. Um, Val's in the cockpit, of course. Um, she hasn't been to orbit yet, I don't think, so... It's really her turn. She's tried a lot, but it's always been on my faulty technology, so... You know... Not, not, not the best. But anyway, it's it's flopping around a bit, but it's it's doing pretty well. This rocket's pretty good. We will speed through time a little bit, just to, you know, for the sake of not boring you to death with the fantastic launch of my glorious rocket. But yeah, it's uh, the, the problem is this has to go to a slightly higher orbit than usual, um, and I don't have super. I don't really have an upper stage engine, so I can't get a really efficient rocket. That's why I'm just going for brute force here. Anyway, let's separate those boosters and just push on to space. Still a pretty tall rocket, but it's uh, it's doing alright. Uh, we're pretty high in the atmosphere now, so uh, it's not much danger of flipping out. Um, and you can see I've got the booster up there and the, the deorbital stage for deorbiting me. Um, not that I really needed it, because I could have just used the booster, but it was just safer. Um, yeah, anyway. The thing is, yeah, I've used another LVT-45 here, the gimbling engine, which is the same as my lower stage engine, because I don't really have a middle ground engine right now between that tiny one and the LTV-45. Um, hopefully soon I will get the smaller LV-909, uh, which is the kind of little little 1.25 meter engine, which is good for upper stages. But anyway, yeah, we've uh, we nailed it. We uh, got into the right orbit. Well, we actually have to fully get into orbit there. That's just a burn towards the ground. Raises my periaps, lowers my uh, apple apps, which is all good. Um, and then we'll just uh, watch ourselves complete our mission. Still got a lot of fuel, actually. I could do some... I could probably go many a place, but I don't have much life support, so I should probably leave it there uh, and just fire up this booster. No decoupler, because it wasn't really necessary. There was nothing that said I didn't have to have a second stage behind the solar rocket booster. So we don't really know how it performs, but that's really the problem of the people who hired me. Not my fault. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm just uh, flipping around a little bit so I don't go too prograde. And yeah, I've got 33 grand, and I'm um, 85 grand now. I've got to really save up so I can get some more missions. Just generally get lots of money and do things um, so I can, you know, do more interesting things. Hopefully I'll go to the moon soon. I think I might need a pro... I need a... No, I only really need solar panels. Because I've got life support, but I don't really have anything to generate power, so my kerbals will die because I'm using tech life support. I, don't, I could do a probe if I launched right to the moon, and which would be cheaper. Uh, which I might do, but I have no communication satellites in orbit right now, so it would be in the blind for most of it, which would be a problem. Anyway, we're actually high above Kerbin now, so I did just grab a quick crew report. Um, but that got me thinking I should probably uh, actually go to high above Kerbin and grab some science. I haven't really done that yet. I haven't been science mining enough. I've been more focused on money, because it's all about money. The hell with science. Science is just really important for our space exploration. <laughs> Money can buy you as many bad rockets as you want, but science will give you a good one. Uh, that's very profound. Um, I'm probably going to copyright that. You know, you can't, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I was one day just NASA it quotes that. It's like, money can buy you as many bad rockets as you want, but science can get you a good rocket. Tape Gaming 2016. Anyway, um, enough of my ramblings and on to just recovering. Yeah, we did the mission! We got a little bit of science. Now we need more science. So, I will take on a mission. Um, a couple of missions. One is science data from around Kerbin. Fits us like a glove. And the other one is to haul the LV-909 to uh, high above Kerbin. It's like uh, 500 kilometers or something. Which is good, because I need that engine. I haven't unlocked it yet. And I'll get paid for using it. Which is fantastic. And I don't have to test it. It's just a haul mission, which I didn't know exists, which means just take it there. You don't have to run a test. So I can take it there after I've used it, which is great, because it's really annoying having to um, uh, not use the engine until you get there, because then you have to build a really big rocket. But yeah, we've got a relatively small rocket. We've got Val in the cockpit again. Um, she's proved her worth, and you know we thought we'd put her on a less crazy rocket this time. We've got a, little, a couple of little boosters down there, just for a little extra thrust off the launch pad, a little extra delta V. They do have parachutes on them, which should uh, land on the thing. I'm not sure if they do, I haven't actually checked. Um, but I, I think I can recover them if they do land, which hopefully they will, that'll be glorious. Anyway, I'm just pushing on to orbit now. I have to get to a, uh, 500 uh, kilometers above 
Kerbin, so I'm just going to keep my periaps low and my apoaps high. That's how to do it. And there we go. We drop away our first stage, and now we're using the LV909. And an actual second stage designed for the job it's doing. I know, right? That's crazy. That's not very tape gaming-y. Um, <laughs> tape gaming just does crazy things. I know, I'm actually pretty efficient and realistic with rockets. That's, that's bullshit. Fuck you, Peter. Fuck you for saying that. Um, Peter's me, not just some voice in my head, by the way. Uh, it's just like, yeah. Anyway, now we're in the correct orbit, and we got a record for going as fast as goddamn possible. Glorious. I think we also got a record last time for returning a Kerbal from high above Kerbin, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, here we are. Let's uh, get some science, complete our other mission. We also got the mission for taking the LV-909 to the correct, uh, correct orbit. Now we've got a hundred Gs, hundy Gs. Um, as the youth would say, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, Peter, that's that's how the youth talk. They also say youth a lot. Um, anyway, let's uh, just grab a bunch more science and, yeah, just take a look at that goddamn beautiful sunrise. Uh, uh, did I reset that or? Oh yeah, I already got that crew report uh, last time I was at this uh, this point in space. But anyway, now it's time to come back. I guess I. Didn't do a retrograde burn. Now I'm doing one because, because it's better to do it. No, I just totally forgot. Anyway, <laughs> just oh wait, I totally forgot to go back. I'm still in space. Anyway, let's bring this down. Hopefully, get some money back for this as well because money is good because then we can buy more rockets and go to the moon. We go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is very easy. Well, it's easy to get to the moon. It's not so easy to get all the technology to go to the moon. Uh, this is in Kerbal Space Program, and in real life, every, everything about going to the moon is just really, really difficult. Hence, us not going there in, like, 40 years. That's depressing. Ugh. Ugh, this country. Anyway, <laughs> we're just returning to re returning to the ocean now, the glorious ocean. If you look down directly at, it just goes totally blue now. Not like, it goes like the stock ocean, not the modern ocean. But anyway, this is the end of the episode, and, uh... I hope you've enjoyed this. It's it's been a, it's been a ride. The first bit was all fails. The second bit was all glory. And you can see the uh, ocean glitching out and becoming like the normal ocean when you look directly down at it. Just there. But anyway, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been episode three of Road to Exploration. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.